Hey guys, what's up? My name's Theo. I play middle linebacker for the Hilversum Hurricanes. That is in the Netherlands. That is in Europe. I live in Amsterdam. Yes, I, I've heard people in the States say that I play Euroball. Totally understandable. Welcome to my channel. I do vlog every single day, but Mondays and Fridays, this video, are devoted to football content because those line up with our football practices for my team. Currently, we're on winter stop, so that is a bit weird. December happens and it's because of holidays and vacations and people want to get out and so after the new year it's all refreshed and people come back and we do football practices and then stuff like that. Anyway, however, things have gotten complicated in the world as they have since, what, March 2020? You know what I mean? Anyways, so I'm not necessarily sure about that one. So my brain is generating content um, for stuff on what to do over the next month, despite the fact that we would be... Anyways, okay, so as the Friday videos go, I do comment responses and you give news. Again, I've already just gave the news because it's help, nice to have it at the beginning. And then I do something at the end. Again, I'm still generating content. Things have been a little bit weird. Um, I'm striking up sled training with uh, someone from my gym because outdoor stuff, I would rather do a workout in freezing temperatures than not do a gym at all because my home stuff sucks. <laughs> so sled training with 70 plus kilos for leg and chest is better than doing with my little bands here at home. Um, but anyways, so yeah, let's move on to comments. Okay, so back to a different idea about football training rollerblades. Um, I'm in lockdown. We're all kind of in lockdown. I'm probably going to pop out the, uh, there's a skate park out there. It's iced over right now. Not a great idea. I do not have any ice skates. I have rollerblades, but yeah, I'm going to do it around the house. We have all hardwood floors everywhere. So I can at least work on the agility that way and stuff. If I can't actually get out to the fields because they're frozen over or covered in children that can't go to school because of lockdowns. Hmm. Anyways, so Orlando Smith says first, and he plays left tackle for the Upper Marlboro Stallion. Uh, they are a semi-pro team in the States, Maryland. Um, so, welcome. <laughs> I'm probably going to be watching a lot of semi-pro in the States just to get my football fixed because the NFL is only is a limited time thing um, up until the Super Bowl. Yeah. Prolonged time subscriber Matthew Riley says good work on the rollerblading skills. He'd try, but he'd probably face plan to break something. People like me do that sort of thing. Weather warning, I get it. Uh, father in law says good to see you on skates. MX Icy on, uh, he usually comments on football videos, but that was not a football video. Um, he says, first of all, love the vids. Thank you. Uh, on the lockdowns football, what happens now? I gave that one on this last Monday. So that's basically explaining the whole thing. We went into super lockdown over the weekend. So I turned my Monday video into explaining what all that means. You can check that out video there. I'm not gonna go over it again. Um, that's the news section. Um, there's no news, that's that one. Guy in Germany asks, why do people wear jerseys with numbers or names of their favorite football players? to totemically identify with the player? I don't. I'm a, uh, he's British, lives in Germany with his Australian husband. I don't, I don't understand sometimes the significance of his language. To me, totemically identify with a player sounds very awkward. I'm from the Pacific Northwest in the States, so we try not to talk about totems too terribly much with all of the Native Americans around. It's, just, it's one of those things. <laughs> So I don't really know what that means to show their, so it says to show their enthusiasm for him and to encourage others to consider developing the same enthusiasm for him or what. Like this sounds like this question, he never really understood it. Yeah, yes, it is. Like in that, in that video, I'm wearing the black fan jersey, number 44, which is Jay Jansen, their long snapper, but I have my name on the back because the NFL store allows for that. This, however, is 59, and it's Keekly. Helps match this helmet. Halloween costume did that. Why do we wear this stuff? Why do people buy movies of certain actors? Like, it's, it seems odd that I have to, ex that I'm explaining fan appreciation. 
I don't, again, I do not understand the significance of why something would need to be a totem. Um, that seems, again, it's a weird word coming from the United States. Um, at least the Pacific Northwest. Uh, I've, yeah. But thinking about the, you know, to show their enthusiasm for them, yes. I, I'm confused reversally about how one is not enthused about a player and wants to represent them in some fashion. Like, this works for, you know, like Hollywood, even the theater. This works for many things. Why do, why do people have Funko Pop of things? Why do they have bobbleheads of Captain America? You know, why do we have periodic tables on our wall? Why do I have the three Stargates as my desktop background? Like, that's... It's just a... It's... You know, why do people have movie posters? I don't, I don't know. I, I'm confused as to how this doesn't make sense. Like, why it is different. And maybe that's just how I was raised in the States. Um, he says maybe here's a shy gay lad in case... Maybe I was also a shy gay lad, and in case I was accused of having a crush on the player. But that's, that seems, I mean, why, I, th I think a lot of guys in the gay community think that the straight community, and I'm saying straight because I just dislike this binary that people force. And I've seen a lot of it and pushed on by the gay community. They push the straights a different direction. I'm like, you are guys first. You do not realize how much more in common you have with guys. And yes, there's a little bit taken away. But it's like, if I had this jersey, if I spent 200 bucks on this jersey and had to pay the import fees from a non-EU UK, <laughs> all those wonderful new tariffs, to get this through over on eBay, because he doesn't actively play anymore, so it's not in the Carolina Panthers store from the United States, and I was straight, is this, would, would, would I become gay by wearing this? By having, a, by having the jersey and I immediately have a crush on him? I mean, what's a crush? You know, why do people wear basketball jerseys with like Michael Jordan or Scottie Pippen on them or LeBron James? People that don't have, it's a poster. It just happens to be a shirt. I have a shirt that says Mykonos on it. I physically went to Mykonos, I bought it in a gift shop on Mykonos, but what does it mean? It's a souvenir. I mean, is that a totem? I guess, but again, I've already covered that one. I don't like to use the word totem. Um, it seems insensitive, but that's just my Pacific Northwest literally being like surrounded by Native Americans who use the word totem in some semblance of religious iconography, I guess. Mm. The United States is not great talking about their about the people that lived before the white folk. So, uh, things are a bit awkward. But that's to show their enthusiasm for them? Yes, that's exactly it. And I don't know why it's complicated. <laughs> um, like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, why do people cosplay? Yeah, that's expensive. But, okay. So, the very last comment's gonna move into the kind of the meat and potatoes of this video, at least the non-commenting part, because again, there's no news. It says, how do the shoulder pads protect you? Well, this is from my original suit of video from almost five years ago at this point. I've been making football content for five years. <laughs> um, so, and I did a suit up video, which is kind of a humorous joke, because I'd seen a couple other people, including I Know Football, doing the video. I did it dumbly. I tried to make it seem official, but it was a joke video. It was a generalized, goofy video that went viral. Like, 1.5 million views viral. So, it winds up getting questions, like legit questions. And once I realized that these were legit questions, and people didn't know how to put on their football gear, I realized I can do stuff. This is a prime example. How do the shoulder pads protect you? I do not own those shoulder pads anymore. In fact, I have been through two sets of shoulder pads since those. I currently have Zenith Element Hybrid. These are like running back, uh, linebacker shoulder pads, because they have so, you know, they have lineman pads, they have skill pads, but Zenith put out this weird hybrid, which is a little bit more protection around the shoulders. So I'm going to go over this one because I'm, you know, physics. What, the, what are shoulder pads for? Physics. 
I studied physics in college, so we're going to talk about this. We're going to flip these over and clamshell them open. As you can see, so here, we're going to look here. This covers my shoulder joint, as you can see. Um, I'm too used to TikToks and not wanting to show off a bare chest, so, and you can see here, this protects this area. I have my helmet right here for the actual hill some hurricanes comes down to about here. So I don't have to worry about anything impacting my neck necessarily. It does happen. Linemen are fucking handsy uh, and they get everything. I haven't had, you know, bad things happen to my neck, but it's definitely like uh, I've been scratched by got linemen not wearing gloves. Anyways, so we're going to describe here, as you can see, do that. First of all, what these do is they provide padding. Like it's literally just like physical impact insulation because as you can see, my chest is here and then there's these thick pads and then there's hard plastic. In terms of physics, the hard plastic, which is really hard plastic, hits a lot of, you know, stops anything super hard because it's hard on hard, but then the actual oomph of the impact gets sheltered, you know, because like you sit here and, you know, you're not going to get bruised. To be fair, it's kind of hard to hit yourself really hard unless your name is Kyle and you're way up on eating drying wall and you're on the 16th monster of the day. Then you can maybe actually hit yourself really hard. But most people like hit themselves and they resist a little bit, but you hit. You know, and when you've got linemen coming in, yeah, they're going to get here, but this is, this is a weird chunk. You're not getting anything here to break ribs. There's not, there's, there's flesh here. <laughs> you know, you're going to get a bruised muscle because, you know, you think, but you've got bone here, bone here. It's to protect your bones, <laughs> really. So where I was hitting is right here. You can see there is... Like this padding is that thick, you know, it's as thick as, you know, it's about as thick as a human eyeball, you know, and it's technology stuff. Like you, you don't need super thick padding. Um, and that's why pad, you know, football pads get better and better. Um, for many times they were just had, you know, thick pillows underneath their shirt, <laughs> you know, like couch cushions because they were, because they were hitting harder and hitting in a weird way from rugby and they were changing the rules a little bit and things have evolved over time from just idle you know hard leather padding you know to you know that basically just this but leather over your shoulder to bite a bit of cushion um to like full-on pads with thick stuff underneath and you know then you got the metal rivets because everything looks cool with metal rivets and then people, you know, and then you got actual like belts from actual like straws. And then later you got, you started putting cushioning in here to prevent this hard area, which even has a little bit of leather on it, from coming in and doing this. So you got a little bit of that so that in case you have this guy here and the ground here and it does this, you're not gonna get suffocated. How does this protect you? Like it protects you a lot and it's by physics because here notice this but I can still pick my arm up I can still push my arm forward and whatnot but if someone comes in with like their hand or their foot or a helmet shouldn't happen but it's an accidental thing however as linebacker I tend to use these more as a weapon <laughs> why I have so many shoulder injuries so much more in the recent years than I did before is because I'm hitting with these shoulders. They're not here like on a skill player, you know, they're there so that you can get impacted. And when you hit the ground, you, and you don't like pop your shoulder out of joint because it, it allows your body to move a little bit within a shell and then the actual like impacts. However, I'm got these, and if you've seen previous photos like this one, I'm, you know, I pull these shoulder pads close into me 
and I run into it with it. Like the most recent game we had at Groninga, I grabbed the guy and I gator rolled him to the ground. And he's like six foot three and probably like 230 pounds, maybe 220, something like that. The dude was a brick truck, <laughs> you know, for our league. And I threw him down like a rag doll, but he landed on me and you know, his elbow came in and hit here, and I felt it because it came in and like grazed upon here. So his elbow hurt when he hit this, you know, and I got stepped on and all that stuff. I got numerous injuries from just that tackle. But that's the thing, it's like these happen because I utilize them as a weapon. I hit because this stuff is hard. And when you get hit with a blunt weapon, you think twice. And so, I'm not saying you need to use your shoulder pads as a weapon, but I'm not saying that they aren't there. They are there purely defensively, especially if you're playing as a linebacker. So, you know, and from what I've seen for linemen, especially offensive linemen, shoulder pads are almost ceremonial. You have to wear them. Um, but it does protect against helmets hitting you because when you have a hard helmet that is designed to protect the most delicate part of your body, per se. If you hit it here, that helmet is gonna win over your shoulder. So you wanna, you know, cause it's supposed to be accidental, but your shoulder pads are there to protect your body to be able to move within it. Because if you stiffen up and you hit, you're doing more damage, actually. The best thing to do is to not freeze up when you tackle but you know, or get tackled. You loosen your body a little bit because the body wants to move. And if you have tightened your shoulder up and everything is seized up around your shoulder and you land on the ground like, and you land on the ground like that, your body can roll and you could lock your shoulder out of joint or worse. <laughs> so, Whereas if you like grab the ball and you pull it in and you're utilizing just like your forearms and hands to hold the ball, but you let your shoulders in the pads flow around, you fall and your, you know, things, your muscles aren't trying to resist joints. So it helps because rather than, it, it, yeah, it allows your body to move within a shell a little bit, much like the helmet. This is Zenith helmet also. You can see there's a little cap in here with all the pads to help with actual impacts. But the actual helmet, as you can see, is not actually, there's only a few pads up in this area up here that provide the actual pack. So what is actually gripping my head is this white area. And then the helmet floats around to an extent after that. And that's how shoulder pads function to an extent, is they're there to work as a shell so that your body can do what it needs to do to accept an impact. That's ridiculously complicated, but I wanted to address that because I know that some people, especially when they're getting into football, they see on the NFL, they're like, how do these shoulder pads protect you if people are getting their shoulder out of joint? And you don't realize how hard they're actually hitting. They're still getting injured through the pad. I'm gonna show something disgusting here for some people. I don't know why scars trigger people. I broke this with shoulder pads on. I broke my collarbone into four pieces with shoulder pads on. When you do that, your teammates very masculinely respect you a lot more because you've been, yeah, you loud and in, you know, an injury happened, but like you have padding on and you still got injured. You're not going light. To be fair, people can still break stuff going light, you know, and a collarbone can break when you're falling off your bike, but it's still, um, you don't get injured sitting on the bench. So yeah. Anyways, that's it for this video. I will catch you guys on the Monday video. Not sure what I'm doing about that one. I'm probably going to film some more stuff at sled training. I did not get a good angle last time. Um, but the camera does not like freezing temperatures. So today may not be the day. But I will talk with Gabriel and see if we can start step it up at least twice a week. Um, yeah. Anyways, catch you guys later.